dear friends welcome to the next topic of study in the ongoing course in journalism and mass communication in the courses for the second semester the areas we shall take up now include reporting editing and production for print journalism in fact these three activities are the most widely recognized and identifiable with the practice of journalism itself since the early days of journalism reporting had been the front end of activity after which every other thing followed in the media field a reporter out there covering events in the field has always been a figure inspiring awe confidence and fear depending upon who is looking at him whatever a reporter used to observe and report was then put through the process of correction and editing and then the approved material went for printing so these three activities reporting editing and production in this order constituted the very basics of the profession of journalism in the first discussion on this topic we will take up reporting with a special focus on print journalism so reporting as the term suggests is the activity of collecting information from a given area and then reproducing it to someone who is responsible for authorizing that activity a reporter does not report to anyone he reports it to the person who sent him for that particular piece of reporting and when we say collecting information it includes seeing what is happening looking around for more sights and visuals listening to the voices and sounds at the area under coverage noting down information that is vital and especially includes names places dates time figure and other statistics and finally asking questions that are relevant to the area under reporting a reporter therefore is a complete gatherer of information and when he comes back to his office or reports to his superior he is supposed to be having answers to all the questions that could be asked in fact he has to be prepared for even the most unconventional or extraordinary questions that may at times seem irrelevant or unconnected to the scene of reporting but in the end such questions do have a connection or a bearing to the subject in some way or the other so a reporter is both the eyes and ears of a news organization that is a newspaper he is the most interesting and familiar face in the organization as far as the people out there are concerned he represents the power of the press in fact a reporter is the press itself he is the gatherer of news and he is required to be on the move most of the time to keep abreast with the latest developments in the area assigned to him his nature of job being such an active and dynamic type of person has greater chances of being successful in this field those who prefer a regular routine and fixed working hours may be unsuitable for this kind of work a reporter's work changes daily and as such he or she should be prepared to handle any type of situation a person who is reserved or introvert in nature and has a patronizing temperament has little or no chances of success in this line of activity a reporter must possess abundant self confidence so as not to be overawed 
by the rank or position of the individuals he is meeting or may meet during the course of his duty he should be a man of initiative and should not be easily disheartened or discouraged he should have the capacity to grasp the situation quickly and write a report in the shortest possible time he must be temperamentally so framed that he should not get irritated even at times when he has to wait for hours to do a story or meet an important person or to get a piece of the facts as a reporter he should also have a bent of mind for research and should be a good talker and a listener as well besides being sociable and of course possesses good health to work without much rest for long hours of work so the sole aim of reporting is to write a report with a certain amount of responsibility to oneself to one's organization and to the society at large one must use the skill of writing consciously and try to write every day so that the style and image of the reporter himself is built and consolidated so in a nutshell a reporter must have these qualities that is possess a nose for news have an outgoing nature have the ability to establish contacts have the ability to be an unbiased observer possess the clarity of expression in language have a team spirit and must have the ability to cope with pressure from outside and within the organization the basics of good reporting are accuracy balance objectivity <coughs> clarity of language and impact so let us see what these basics are all about <coughs> accuracy is basic requirement for any news item when you fail in accuracy you lose credibility and you fail in journalism check and cross check facts and information regardless of the source which it comes from if you are paraphrasing a speech from a text provided to you make sure that you do not change the meaning or quote the statements out of context always exclude rumors or gossip from your report the next requirement is balance balance in reporting is as important as accuracy if you are writing about a controversy always mention both versions of the controversy or versions from both sides of a controversy when reporting about a strike for example give the claim of the authorities as also that of the striking workers on how far the strike was successful a story appears unbalanced if it has too much of one side's views only objectivity means not mixing your opinion with facts a reporter must state only the fact and other people's opinions and not his own opinion a reporter should be a disinterested observer and reporting an event without taking sides is what his objective should be in a report the introductory sentence should be short and in active voice as far as possible and the ideal length of each paragraph may be 4 to 5 lines containing few sentences so that the scope for putting in an opinion is reduced so impact is something a news report must have whatever the length or placement or display of the report 
the reporter in fact must consider the impact of the report before writing it such as whether the report will lead to a change for the better or lead to trouble or avert a tragedy and it is important to develop a nose for news particularly for those news that will make an impact so now we come to the next step in reporting that is the source of news a reporter must develop a variety of reliable and highly placed sources such sources if they are individuals serve as useful and dependable sources of information among common sources there are some that are available to all reporters of all organizations such as public meetings conferences and seminars radio and television bulletins press conferences news briefings and other functions but then there are certain sources that reporters cultivate exclusively for themselves these may be functionaries at whatever level in the government private and non government organizations retired or former employees or officers disgruntled people in all walks of life trade union office bearers business leaders serving or former politicians students or teachers in fact these sources also can be friends relatives or family members placed in relevant positions from where news may emanate sometimes a valuable news tip may come from someone who is not highly placed such as as someone's driver or assistant or attendant or even a servant while some sources may like to be quoted for the report others may like to keep their identity hidden it is the responsibility of the reporter not only to quote actual sources if they are willing to be quoted but also guard their identity in all circumstances if they so wish reporters must always keep some documents or copies of such documents with them to prove the truthfulness or the worth of their report so what are the qualities which a reporter must possess in fact it is not possible to lay down any particular set of qualities that make a journalist a good reporter while there are some general qualities such as an inquisitive nature a sense of public welfare and public interest a strong command over the language and a quick footed personality there are some qualities that are typical for a reporter these are wide reading a reporter must be well read to not only do justice to his reporting but also to recognize and understand issues on which reporting needs to be done reading all local newspapers and some national or international journals besides magazines of own personal interest on subjects of own interest such as sports business economy films etc goes a long way in making the reporter better equipped to do reporting the next quality is the knowledge of local affairs a reporter must apprise himself with all aspects of the city where he is working including its geography basics of history technical data the functioning of the government and cultural aspects of that place if one is covering the local civic body or the university for example it goes without saying that knowledge of that organization is a must patience and presence of mind a reporter is very likely to land in unforeseen situations or find himself amidst unknown unfriendly people he must possess 
patience and presence of mind not only to save the situation but also save himself from getting into trouble. He must be able to perceive, calculate, predict and plan his action appropriately in anticipation of a news event. Sharp memory. A sharp memory for remembering facts, statements, faces and sights or sounds is a strong prerequisite for reporters. He must also remember people who make news or could make news and react quickly in keeping with the situation that develops. Making friends. It is important for the reporting journalist to make right kind of friends with people he meets during his work. A reporter should be a sociable person but not fall prey to superficiality. A certain amount of cynicism is important since a reporter must by nature ask questions everywhere. He should have the ability to differentiate between what is superficial and what is real. He should not be bought over by vested interests or by temptations of cheap gains in the course of his work. Inquisitiveness A reporter must always be on the lookout for new ideas and stories all the time. The approach should be to bring to his readers something new and fresh every time. His alertness helps him get a good story and also at times saves the situation from getting worse. A sense of responsibility. A reporter must always remember his sense of responsibility towards the people, society in general and of course the organization he is working for. A reporter is answerable to as much his organization as to the readers who read his report. A reporter's report is never a personal document but a public or social document that is in public domain for everyone to read. People are free to not only read it but react and analyze it according to their own interpretation. Even the reporter's rivals or detractors, enemies and well-wishers alike have as much a right to read and reject or appreciate his report as anyone else including his colleagues, superiors and other people in the organization. So what are the basic tips for a reporter? I will list 10 of them. Number 1. He should always keep handy a small notebook or an engagement diary to make his working systematic and attend to his appointments, make quick notes and also note down important numbers, dates, time, initials of people and so on. Number two, he must always think how his report must begin. After all, a reporter is the only link between an event or a news source and his organization. It is his prerogative to give a particular introduction to his report. However, he is likely to lose this prerogative if he repeatedly writes an improper introduction and the report after getting unduly influenced by either his sources or by either party to a story. Number 3. A reporter must always understand the value and importance of time both for submitting his report and for the date of publication of the same. At times, he must convey the essential aspects of the report to his editor well before he actually files the report to save on time and also give time to the organization to react if the report is important enough. At other times, he may well have to make telephone calls to dictate the story if there is a shortage of time or there is an emergency situation. Number 4. 
a reporter must remember the importance of preserving the confidentiality of his news source and also give credit where it is due it does not give any lasting benefit if a reporter tries to act smart and steal a story idea or an entire story from somewhere else for example any other publication or any other colleague in the field number 5 the use of simple language must never be forgotten a reporter must always avoid using difficult or complex words for the sake of showing off his knowledge of the language he should write to enable his readers to understand not go and looking up a dictionary to understand what he has written number 6 a reporter must have the ability to understand what is meant to be reported and what needs to be ignored a very common complaint against reporters is that they very often report something that did not happen the way they have written about it this is because many people react very oddly in the heat of a confrontation and later these people do not even remember that what they did a reporter must be very careful and wary of such situations otherwise his reports will always be contradicted by not only the person who is being reported about but also even the people who were present at that spot at that time number 7 a reporter must learn the art of saying a lot in few words this is basically a skill of writing but it can be mastered with practice reporting a public meeting by a politician for example can be tedious if the speaker goes on and on for an hour or more a reporter need not report every sentence that the person has spoken and therefore must condense the words which he hears to the minimum and summarizing of news events is very important number 8 a basic knowledge of writing on computers is now an essential attribute of a reporter whatever the choice of reporting the subject or the language since newspaper organizations the world over are now working on the electronic means of transmitting information from a reporter to the printing area number 9 having a clear idea of his assigned subjects goes a long way in making reporters understand the value of teamwork very often it is seen that reporters get excited after doing one good story and start jumping around to do all kinds of stories as if they have mastered the art of journalism it must be remembered that journalism functions as a structured process and not as something that is pursued as a hobby or social work where things can be done as and when it pleases one and number 10 in journalism no one ever learns everything since whatever goes on in the world keep changing every day every moment in fact so do the kind of reports and work of a reporter one must never get the feeling that he has learned everything for even senior reporters or editors every day comes with new stories new challenges new language and of course new ideas that have to be cultivated every day so let me come to the basic things to be learned for a beginner for every entrant to the profession of journalism the first thing they want to do is to become a reporter a sense of power and privilege is associated with the job of news reporting this has its origins in the early days of journalism when the access to government departments was very little and government functionaries also behaved 
in a very feudal manner. In such situations, if a reporter could get access to an officer and get some information from him that was published, it was enough reason for other people to presume that the reporter was powerful. Very soon, people started to approach the reporters themselves for getting some work done from the government. And most often, reporters did oblige, partly to get a story out of the whole thing and partly for other reasons. In course of time, this became a system that people very often routinely approach reporters for even the small work rather than going to the office or the officer concerned directly. This has made the profession of reporting highly coveted among young aspirants. But here lies a catch. Becoming a reporter is fine, but then taking this route to becoming a middleman will leave you high and dry. It should always be remembered that everyone the readers, your organization and the authorities or the people in the establishment actually know what a reporter is up to. Politicians and bureaucrats often use reporters to settle their own scores and then blame them if anything goes wrong. We keep coming across reports very frequently in the press about the media being blamed for complicating things or aggravating a situation or creating misunderstanding or casting aspersions on the character and working of certain people in public life. The lesson to be learned is that reporting indeed brings some level of power and authority to the reporter of even a small newspaper, but this does not take a reporter very far in the profession. To be a good reporter, earning the trust of the readers is more important than getting some work done for some of them. Another important thing to be learned is that in the long run, a reporter has to justify and prove his story himself. Friends and even the organization he works for may not be of much help if a reporter faces some legal problems because of his links. An organization shall never appreciate getting embroiled in a legal case because of a reporter. The ultimate responsibility of backing a report in a court of law in the face of a defamation case or a legal controversy is that of a reporter himself. Therefore, extreme caution must be exercised if a reporter carries allegations that are wild and cannot be substantiated. Staying unaffected by attractive gifts or special offers is something a reporter has to learn early on in the career. In view of the growing reach and power of the media, more organizations and individuals try to win the favor of reporters, but extreme caution and discretion is a must to maintain credibility and acceptability in all classes of society. After all, a reporter is a bridge between the people and the establishment and he should remain that. Now we come to kinds of reporting. The kinds of reporting that are generally applicable in a standard newspaper are many. Since most newspapers are located and printed in a city, the institutions, government departments, business and educational establishments, and the services like the railways, road transport, telecom, electricity, hospitals, shops, and non-government organizations, beside cultural activities and crime are the major areas which are covered by the reporters in that particular city. These areas are known as beats and such beats are divided among reporters 
in a newspaper by the editor or the news editor himself the reporter concerned needs to study his beats thoroughly before venturing out so that no one can take him for a ride government reporting especially departments ministries public sector organizations and political reporting are given to reporters after they put in some years of experience so that they can understand the seriousness of the subjects given to them and they do not fall easily in political complications or political games that people play in a newspaper organization in addition to reporters playing the role of news gatherers they are also responsible for establishing the authenticity of news reports received from other sources this means that if a reporter is given the responsibility of covering the university then he is responsible for verifying the authenticity of all information regarding the university that comes into the newspaper office from other sources whether voluntary or solicited the reporter has to take the call in accepting or rejecting the information thus received and therefore must remain prepared to justify his action if there is any complication later on another responsibility given to reporters is to deal with press releases or press notes that keep coming in in a newspaper office from different sources while at times these press releases can serve as a vital source of news or engagements of events in the city at other times these can create a great kind of confusion owing to their number and very often unsubstantiated content that they carry to begin the description of different kinds of reporting we first take up crime reporting reporting about the crime or law and order situation in a city is both exciting as well as considered predictable by any reporter there is tremendous public interest in crime and in fact no newspaper can afford to ignore crime reporting crime is a part of life and society and it is the duty of a newspaper to inform the readers about the crime scene in that city and elsewhere as also the security agency's response to the crime situation or the purpose and progress of investigation if a crime has been committed although crime reporting is generally assigned to a re junior reporter or reporters who are beginners in the profession it is a highly responsible and specialized job the reporter assigned with the crime beat should not only have the ability to sift fact from fiction he should have the capacity to find out facts rather than rely on the police version alone a crime reporter is expected to have a code of honor he should be as objective as possible and avoid resorting to cheap sensationalism or poor language to attract the attention of his readers he should not suppress news of public interest and he must develop contacts within the local and state level of the police as well as the anti social elements he should also not settle his scores with the police or lawyers and also not invade the privacy of citizens who are somehow getting covered during a crime reporting crime reporters must also refrain from glorifying criminals or gangsters and never violate the terms of and the norms of decency among the incidents that are covered by crime reporters are burglary loot robbery accidents fire fraud blackmail kidnapping murder rape kidnappings and so on 
a reporter must ensure that all facts are mentioned in a crime report to explain the incident clearly to the readers in case of a major accident the reporter must visit the spot and take his own notes he must take the other or the official version after having observed the things for himself for a crime reporter it is important to spend time on meeting people talking to individuals in a locality where some crime incident has taken place look around for small clues or anything else that can provide information related to the incident the idea is to collect whatever information has been overlooked by the police or investigative agencies so that the reporter's report can add to whatever is known to everyone very often it is termed as being parallel investigation by the media and the police frequently use this tactic of reporters as a ploy to hide their own shortcomings or incompetence in any investigation however crime reporters must know where to draw the line in this kind of parallel investigation since in the course of law and justice the media's investigations may or may not stand the test of legal scrutiny in many cases the court actually takes cognizance of media reporting about a crime and either acknowledges its roles in coming to a logical conclusion like in the well known jessica lal murder case or the court may castigate the media for influencing the police investigation or even the court's proceedings in a particular case moreover the crime reporter may expose himself to unnecessary trouble and prolonged involvement <coughs> by pursuing a particular case too far and too long whereas in the end it would be only the police report that would be crucial in conviction or otherwise in a case of crime in the end it is important to remember that the job of a crime reporter is not to prosecute or exonerate someone but report honestly what the people must know and as far as possible highlight those points that have been overlooked during the investigation in case of reporting accidents or disasters very often the first and basic information is supplied by the police or other agencies that are involved in relief work but a crime reporter must ensure that he visits the spot himself and not rely on the authorities to give authenticity to his report in case of such disasters like a building collapse the reporters must ensure that their visits do not hinder relief work since the priority on such occasions is saving lives and looking for clues can always follow later however the reporter must have a keen sense of observation so that vital clues are at least not ignored by them a related area is investigative reporting it is a related kind of reporting but not the same as crime reporting in fact investigative reporting may not be about a crime at all it can be a reporter's own investigation into a past event a social or other happening or simply it may involve paperwork to unearth something that has remained hidden for a long time investigative reporting is different from other kinds of reporting because one it is not done in methods but in circumstances number 2 the questions to be asked in each instance of investigative reporting are always different number 3 sources in investigative reporting 
are to be tapped in most unlikely places. It can be a servant, a doorman, a gateman, a lift attendant and so on who can give a reporter vital clues and bits of information if an investigation is being carried out. Number four, more time, energy and patience is required in investigative reporting than in any other kind of reporting. Next, it involves lengthy paperwork, analysis, cross-checking and gaining access to old documents. It can be very time-taking. And investigative reporting is very often a teamwork and it may take not only a long time to be complete, completed but also it may involve the availability and tuning of different people for a singular purpose. Investigative reporting is generally directed towards unearthing of bribery, corruption, incompetence in public administration and ignoring of public interest in governance. How would investigative reporting originate and end is very hard to tell because the prime characteristics are hidden from the beginning till the end. Very often it, it, it could happen that a reporter himself does not know what he is looking for. He follows certain leads which could be blind and he stumbles upon certain facts that lead to a great investigation. For example, it is no news that a junior employee on an insignificant position in any government department buys a luxury car and a house. But it is definitely a subject of investigative reporting as to how he managed to raise money for these purchases. The reporting may lead and progress a little every day or nothing on certain days but in the end it may come up with startling information that may unearth a big scandal. It is after an investigative reporting assignment ends that the prosecuting agencies may take over, register a case and launch proceedings for punishing the culprit. A great example of investigative reporting is the unearthing of the Watergate scandal in the USA in 1972 when two journalists, reporters basically, of the Washington Post daily newspaper started to investigate a burglary in an office and the ensuing investigation led to the resignation of the then president Richard Nixon. The two reporters later said that they did not even know that their investigations would lead to this kind of a major political upheaval that shook not only the US but the entire world. Their remarks were that, quote, we did not go after the president, we went after the story, unquote, is significant for laying down the objectives of investigative reporting of any kind. Such reporting must never involve mudslinging or character assassination but slowly and steadily look for clues, collect them and see where they lead. The outcome can be anyone's guess. Next is the collective term specialized reporting that includes subjects such as business reporting, law reporting, sports reporting, fashion and culture reporting, development reporting, science reporting and sector reporting such as areas of aviation, health, telecom and so on which has become popular in recent times as even sectors have grown important enough to be reported independently of other subjects. As is clear from the term 
Specialized reporting involves a clear understanding of the area under reporting, a personal interest in that area of the reporter, patience to collect information and analyzing it, knowing people and places related to the area of work, and finally a sense of perspective that makes it clear that a reporter knows that he is doing specialized kind of reporting and not routine reporting of any news event. For example, a sports reporter must have a penchant for all kinds of sports, understand the rules of all kinds of games, statistics, names of players, dates, events and above all, he must have the flow and expression in his language required to express the sentiments which are otherwise so visible during the game on the field and off the field. His writing of covering the event should be such that these sentiments are conveyed to the reporters, to the readers when they read the report next day. Similarly, in fashion and culture reporting, the knowledge of past events, milestones in the field, names of exponents, trends and a global perspective are a must. In these times of international worldwide cultural and sports exchanges, knowledge of names all over the world, trends and events is a must for worthwhile reporting in specialized cases. It holds true in case of reporting of celebrity movements and happenings related to entertainment, cinema and television as well. Television and internet in fact have made access and availability of information simple, cheap and easy. Therefore, a specialized reporter has to work harder to give something new and interesting to his readers. As far as political reporting and business reporting, two major areas of reporting are concerned. These have now emerged as independent lines of reporting with some organizations even experimenting with cultivating young reporters to go in for these areas since the beginning, much as is the case of sports reporting or science reporting. For political reporting, the, the attributes of reporting are the same involving a sense of perspective, patience, knowledge of facts, names, places, dates and a wide knowledge of not only the political area that is being covered but of the society and the nation's history and laws as well. The person interested in political reporting should also have wide knowledge of differing or conflicting political opinions. It is obvious that anyone doing political reporting will have to move in political and government circles, talk to politicians, officers and workers and employees. A natural spin-off is a sense of power developing in the reporter himself. Moreover, if a reporter combines his own political opinion or political leaning in his reporting, then the result may not be in large public interest. Since the reporter may try to influence his readers with a particular political line of thought which is his own, knowledge of parliamentary procedures, election laws, constitutional provisions, local laws and local government and political environment are prerequisites for political reporting. Incidentally, political reporting begins for a reporter by making rounds of offices of the political parties first and dealing with press releases that are issued routinely by the political parties, office bearers and even small functionaries of political parties. A reporter must know the names of responsible persons as well as the official spokespersons of the political parties by name 
so that he can understand and reflect upon the authenticity of the press releases and the statements that will come to him next is business reporting in business reporting the focus is always on facts figures statistics and past performance of individuals companies and business or commercial establishments a background in business and economics may be desirable since it gives a sense of perspective but it is not considered essential knowledge of the market economy however is important if one wishes to comment on the stock market finance banking and industry to sum up the kinds of reporting it is important to remember that the qualities in a reporter as mentioned earlier are applicable to all kinds of reporting a sense of responsibility answerability to the people society and the organization of course are common to all kinds of reporting it is only the ways and means to accomplish the task that differ in each segment of reporting a crime reporter a sports reporter a law reporter a political reporter or a cultural reporter have 90% common characteristics it is the rest 10% that make them suitable for their respective field of reporting but there is one aspect that is the end result of all kinds of reporting that is writing of news reports by a reporter the main purpose of a news story is to report the news in an objective manner this means that the author of the news report should not include his or her own opinions in the article the author should tell the readers what has occurred but should stick to the facts for example if a reporter is writing about a man whose store was forced to close because of bankruptcy the reporter should not write that the store owner deserved to go out of business because he was rude to his customers or because he charged too much for the goods that he sold to give another example an objective journalist reporting on how a university spends its money cannot write that the university should spend less money on professors salaries and more on university sports teams or lab equipment these are the reporter's personal opinions and they do not belong in a news story unless stated by someone who is also a stakeholder in the story such as a trade union leader or a student's body or a teacher's organization and so on it is quite acceptable however for a reporter to quote other people's opinions in a news report a news story written about a university's budget as mentioned above may contain several quotes from the students who say that they think the money spent on the staff salaries is a waste but a good news report must always be balanced in other words in this university budget story the reporter must always give the university's administration a chance to explain why they have decided to increase professor salaries but not increase the funding for university's sports team or lab equipment if there is a reason which the university establishment has it must be given to make the story balanced most news stories revolve around some sort of conflict conflicts involve opposing opinions all the sides involved in the conflict must be given a chance to have their say in the news report if this does not happen the news report is neither balanced nor fair in reality however it is almost impossible for a news story to be completely objective no matter how hard the reporter tries to make it there are many factors in a news story 
that can imply bias either intentionally or not. So the basic requirements in a news report that a reporter has to meet at all times to provide the answer is the questions that involve the five W's and one H. These are what, when, where, who, why and how. The introduction in a news report must contain the answers to all these questions and this style of writing, a standard in journalism worldwide, is known as the inverted pyramid. By inverted, it is meant that the wide base is on top and the pointed tip is below, meaning thereby that the maximum facts should be mentioned in the beginning itself, while the lower part must contain less important and few things, so that even this part is cut or deleted for reasons of length, nothing is missed from the report. In a typical news report, regardless of the subject matter of reporting, the sentences in the instruction for the inverted pyramid are written in four steps, collecting all the facts, summing them up and boiling them down, prioritize the who, what, when, where and why, and rethink, revise and write. Introductions that start with either who or what tend to be more effective. The introduction ideally should be written in one sentence of about 30 words. There are other usable styles of introduction, each of which is in self-identifying form. A news report, after being submitted by a reporter, is put through a process in which a sub-editor looks for mistakes, makes corrections, improves language, streamlines its length, gives it a headline, and decides about its display. <clears throat> a reporter knows that all this is going to happen to his report at the hands of the news desk. A professional and friendly conflict between the reporter and the desk is therefore universal in all newspapers across the world and at all times. It is better for a news reporter to remember this as a part of the profession, a part of the work, since a news reporter most often believes what he has written is the last word. Even when rightful corrections are made to a reporter's report, or the report's length is reduced, or unnecessary parts are cut, the reporters feel that they are being targeted by the desk people. But a reporter must remember that the desk also is doing its job as the reporter has done his. The end result is the production of a newspaper that has the best report, best headline and the best display. Journalism is all about teamwork and reporting is no exception regardless of the glamour and power attached to it. With this, we end the discussion on reporting and the kinds of reporting. To recap, we see that reporting is the most basic activity of all kinds of journalism and the dream of every aspiring journalist is to become a reporter. There are many things involved in reporting such as a sense of purpose, basic public interest, patience, power play and of course rewards. The job is not without its pitfalls if a reporter fails to do his job properly. The history of media has several examples when good reporting has led to unearthing of scandals and prosecution of the guilty. We shall take up further aspects of reporting in our next discussion. Till then, my best wishes and thank you.